catch up, but go ahead and finish uh, all of the assignments in really one feel smooth. Yeah. So uh, currently right now what we're doing in English uh, for sophomores is uh, we just started the book Lord of the Flies. Um, so uh, for my class, we finished chapter one this week. Uh, we are reading the book um, audio style. Uh, William Gold, we're, we're listening to a version from William Golding. Uh, uh, each of my students has an individual um, packet. Uh, so, uh, for example, um, we have uh, vocabulary for chapter one. Then there's reading comprehension questions to go along with that. Gotcha. Um, there's literary uh, literary terms for chapter one. Um, uh, I gave them, we did a character chart um, yesterday uh, just for um, Jack, Piggy, and Ralph. And then today the kids took uh, their um, chapter one vocabulary quiz. Okay. Uh, so when, when, we get back, when we get back, we'll go ahead and jump right into chapter two. Okay. Okay. Well, so that's right. And, go ahead. And here's the thing about induction. Um, ideally induction fits exactly with what you're doing in your class every once in a while you get something that you're just thinking wait a minute I have these things that I need to do either you know established protocols scheduling pacing uh, curriculum things that you have to do and it doesn't always match exactly um, okay and that makes it difficult how and and induction should never be difficult it should be a natural part of what okay. you're doing in your class and so um, I will say this with project-based learning. Project-based learning is something that, you know, uh, takes weeks and weeks to, to fully accomplish it. However, there are small parts of it that you can accomplish inside of your classroom. Okay. Uh, and so I, I like to call induction project-based learning. I call it project-based learning light. Okay. Okay, now I don't know that anybody at, at uh, you know, RCOE would necessarily agree with that description, um, but I but I will tell you that I mean, but they also I'm sure they would understand. You know that you know let's try to get some components. The important parts of project-based learning are things like um, an inquiry-based approach. You know so, okay, so and well, okay so then that well I didn't mean to cut you off but. I, now I feel kind of dumb because I had something that we did in class that I, I feel like I could have recorded, and uh, and that was um, my students did a web quest all about William Golding, his uh, experience in the Royal Navy, um, his experience in the war. They then um, they also did a web quest uh, with regards to Auschwitz and Birkenau, um, okay. you know, all these different things that were related to his background that led him up to write this novel um okay. and i i wish i could have gone back and recorded that <laughs> my question my question is 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 there a way that i can use uh their their work as absolutely. a submission absolutely absolutely oh. let's let's oh. rec let's record a different component one of the components okay. has to do with a public product Okay. Okay. So, so an exhibition of their learning, something that way. They they created a blog entry. They, um, you know, you know, spoke to a group. They they did lots of things. So that that public audience could be a part that you could that you could record. Um, you know, there there are other parts of the instruction. You know, as I said, it's an inquiry based approach. So just you know, some video of you working with students in an inquiry based approach, where they're generating the questions and you're helping to assist them in in finding their answers. Um, that's that's a good that's a that would be a good thing as well, and that would totally suffice as far as okay. as far as the video evidence. But the physical evidence that you had of of the products they did in the web quest, by all means, you can submit that. Okay, okay, that's no problem. Because I wanted to ask because like if if when we come back from break uh, that following Monday, and you know, we're, if I was to record a student sitting next to me and. Uh, you know, to try to, you know, prod them to say, like, you know, what led to the fire on the mountain in chapter two? You know, why don't, you know, other students or why don't other kids respect, you know, what Piggy is saying? So that would essentially count as inquiry based. Um, 
Like if I it, was kind of, if I was be. if I was using questions to guide them toward you know their ability to you know yes. come to an answer. Yes, and if your if your questions are open ended, um, okay. If if they're open ended and they don't have a right wrong answer, um, okay. yes, that that certainly works towards that end. Okay, that's yeah. fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, I, again, I don't want you to have. You should never have to create something brand new, you know, to meet the requirements of induction. It should be yeah. should be consistent with the things you're doing in the classroom. So okay. um, I'm doing just a quick, um, I'm doing a quick little Google search here for. Um, have you been on the Buck Institute website? No, and and there's so many different uh, uh, resources that um, the program gives us. Sometimes yeah. it feels a little bit overwhelming. I understand, um, but so but I, w no, I, would, I, I would say this: um, if you create an account at the Buck Institute, um, okay. it does, it's free. They just want an account that they can send you emails. So I don't know if you have a fake email. I have Kane Junk at Gmail. I never check it. All right. <laughs> but it's, a, it's an account that I use for things that tend to generate a lot of spam. Unless you would yeah. like to get e emails into your professional account, that's fine. Um, once you do that, though, you can peruse all of their resources. And if you search for William Golding or, you know, you, know, you will get other teachers that have done some things. And then, and then you can actually take some components of those and maybe work that into yours just a little bit. Okay, cool. That's does, fair. That, does that okay. make sense? Yeah, that does. Um, and then the other thing that I was going to clarify here, and my internet is is very slow. In fact, they warned me when I came into this room. I was I was assisting. Where I'm at Ranchero Middle School, and they had uh, medieval day today, and so oh, okay. I I volunteered to coach rounders, which is the. <laughs> I don't, have you ever heard of rounders before? No. Uh, rounders is the predecessor of baseball. Um, oh. Wow. But you go the opposite way around bases, and they aren't really bases; they're poles. Okay. And and there's some other crazy rules. You can get half points, and and some things. And the home base is not home base; it's the castle, and you have to send runners out to get supplies like food, water, and weapons. And those those are the bases. So, so it was kind of interesting. But they warned me that the internet wasn't wasn't real real great. Um, in your training, did you see the wheel? There was a there was a round wheel. I did. It was, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, think about not necessarily fulfilling all of those components because I, I would argue unless you're teaching every subject area in a self-contained classroom, it's very difficult to get to every single one of those components. At, at the high school level, what that means is you would need to coordinate with fellow teachers in other subject areas. Um, but but think about the wheel and and try to hit some of them and that's what you would put into that plan um, and if you notice on the on the um, CTI website uh, as well in addition to your uh, professional learning plan they want you to upload that that plan as well by all means it doesn't have to be as intricate as some of the ones that you would see on the Buck Institute um, right. Or as detailed, but look for the things that would actually f that you could fit with your students. Okay. All right. That's fair. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. I was racing around here a little bit, and you, uh, <laughs> I heard your incoming call oh. coming in, and I was like, I, I have to get some good internet. Oh. And obviously, the internet wasn't that good because it wasn't working on my on my laptop, but. <laughs> Well, I'm glad, I, I'm, I'm glad we got the chance to catch up and, you know, and, and check in. So, because yeah. I, I just had a couple questions about the cycle and, you know, I, uh, I just kind of needed your feedback and your guidance on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, it's, it's project-based learning light. Gotcha. Okay. You know, it's not as, it's not, um, there's no way you could do the full depth of that in this amount of time. You know, okay. with, without you know a fair amount of you know setup, you know with it, and you know, and, and honestly, it's it's kind of sprung on you a little bit. So, um, I'm trying to look. I'm trying to pull up that that image still of that wheel, which 
actually I think is is a really good okay it's the red wheel I always get confused they changed colors a few years ago and and changed the what red the, one. yeah I don't know if they okay. showed you a blue one but the red wheel is the one to go to okay gotcha um, all right perfect okay so so for example authenticity you know you're you're teaching Lord of the Flies you know with students and authenticity okay what's the real world connection there that you can make with students that's a that's a very inquiry based project based kind of thing and the kids create some kind of product that reveals you know how real world that is that would be one kind of snapshot that you could do could and, that be like a journal response um it would probably be ultimately a little bit more significant than that um okay. Remember, one of, one of the components is there's a, there's a public product. So it, maybe it's a journal on a blog site, you know, or they create a website where they respond to something, you know, okay. something that could be public that way. Um, I'm looking at another thing here, student voice and choice, that students regularly have, you know, uh, autonomy and choice along the way. Um, and that's, that, that's another thing that you could evidence you know, as well, okay. maybe in a video in your class of kids working on different things, you know, different, you know, you, you divide it up where, you know, the kids choose which group they want to be a part of. Maybe one group is really looking at social structures, you know, and how that aligns with what they, what they see with those, with those boys on the island. And somebody else is looking at, you know, environmental challenges and somebody else is looking at, you know, you know, some different things like that, but they get to choose which one. Um, okay. Now there is reflection component, so journaling would fit exactly with the reflection component. Okay. You know, as long as students are thinking about their learning, so the re the reflection wouldn't be on Lord of the Flies. It would be on what did I learn about myself in this process. It could be I maybe it's some skill set, some writing skill, or or something like that, and the kids would compose about that. Does, does that make sense about the difference with the reflection? It does, yeah. Okay, um, I'm, I'm going around the wheel here. I mean, you could, you could choose some different ones and those would be the ones you'd kind of hone in on with students. And I think okay. that makes it manageable in your classroom. Does that, does that sound a little bit better? It you... does, yeah. I mean, I, I'm thinking, I, uh, obviously I'm thinking of having three students that I mean, they're going to struggle because they're that low, but I think the majority of them can handle it. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Um, I have to apologize for the other night. I went out for a quick mountain bike ride with my son. No, it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> and and, and um, anyway, it turned into um, not a quick mountain bike ride. In fact, it, it turned into a walk home. <laughs> oh, wow. <Jeez. laughs> so... Um, uh, so I, I apologize profusely for that, but we did it's have a okay. good, we had a good time. How does that help? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, maybe we could connect. You have spring break next week. Yeah, it's right? early. We, um, we get one week uh, and then we come back. Okay. And uh, my spring break is the next week. That doesn't mean that we can't connect over that spring break. Okay. You know, but I want to I want to honor your break specifically. My schedule's you know chaotic, you know. But okay. Maybe yeah, that's when... fine. Uh, I uh, I'm not going out of town at all. Uh, I'm uh, just taking my daughter to school, uh, and that's it. So my days are are, are free. Uh, I don't have golf practice at all during spring break. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, if we were going to connect next week, would definitely okay. Okay. Be fine. We wanted to do it during your spring break, whatever season. Okay. Okay, yeah, feel free to shoot me an email and say, okay, how does this thing look? But it would be awfully nice if maybe you could go into that template, the project-based template, and maybe just pick a couple components. Say, okay, I want to do this one, and, and I want to do this one, and this one I'm not able to hit very deeply given the amount of time and, and not a whole lot of warning about this. Um, that's, and that's fine. And then uh, maybe send me a link to that, and then we'll upload that for your evidence of that. Okay, perfect. I okay. appreciate it, David. All right, all right, sure, anytime. All right, now I'm going to run out and pick up my kids. <laughs> all right, man. Well, hey, happy Friday. Okay, you too. All, all right, right, we'll see you, Joe. All right, bye. bye.